Morning, today is Thursday. It is the 28th day of Kislev, the fourth day of Hanukkah. Don't forget to light the Hanukkah candles tonight, the fifth candle. Let's begin the Tanya. Let's begin with Tzedaka. G'dayla Tzedaka, Shemekareves, Esageula. And today we're going to be talking about the clothing. When the clothing are more important than the one wearing the clothing. So no, it's not a class about fashion. Sorry to disappoint you. It is a we're talking about the clothing, the spiritual clothing of the soul. We mentioned yesterday, we started yesterday explaining the way the Alter Rebbe explains uh, analyzing our godly soul and how the godly soul, what is the essence of the godly soul, how it affects us. The essence of the godly soul is pure godliness. And then he's talking about the ten powers of the soul, the, the faculties of the soul, the intellectual faculties, and the emotional faculties, the intellect, the intellect creates the emotions. And then, in the beginning of chapter 4, which we are now in the middle, the Alter Rebbe started saying that we have, in addition to the faculties of the soul, the intellectual and the emotional faculties, we also have three garments, three clothings. And we explained yesterday, what are the three clothing, clothings? We have the thoughts, we have the speech, and the action. Why do we call them clothing? Because just like clothing, expresses the person. The clothing expresses who the person is. You look at a person, you see what type of person he is. The person comes is, is, is in, is, comes to the in front of the judge, he's going to be wearing a nice suit, even though that's not exactly what he's wearing on the regular day, because you want to give it a different impression. This is the soul expresses itself through the thoughts, through the speech, through the action. And also, just like the clothing is something you can take off and you can put on at will. The same thing, those three things, you can change and you can put the right clothing. You have the clothing of the godly soul and you have the clothing of the animal soul, which you, the Alter Rebbe is going to discuss it later. Now he's talking about the focusing on the godly soul. What are the clothing of the godly soul? To have thoughts, clean thoughts, thoughts, thoughts in the Torah mitzvahs. You have the speaking, words of Torah, praying, speaking nicely to your spouse, to a friend, to, talking about positive things. These are the clothing of the soul. And action, when you do a mitzvah, you put on the tefillin, you put in tzedakah, you light the Shabbat candles, the Hanukkah candles. Those are the actions that you're doing. Those are the clothing of the soul, the way the soul expresses itself. But now the Alter Rebbe is going to say that when we're talking about the clothing for the soul, which are the godly uh, clothing, the clothing of the Torah, and the mitzvahs, in this case, the clothing are more important than the soul itself. Even though we said that the soul is a godly. And what you do with your soul, everything, the, the way the soul thinks about Hashem, even the one, the way that the soul feels its connection through love and fear of Hashem. All of this is beautiful. But when the soul wears the clothing, which means the thinking of the words of God, of the Torah, and the speaking of the words of Torah, and doing the mitzvahs, those clothing are even more important than the soul itself, and in fact, it elevates the soul to a much higher place. Now, what does that mean? How does that work? And the answer is simple. Because when we are talking about connecting to God, you want to connect to God. How does it, if you think about it, this is really a, a ludicrous idea. You want to connect to a God. 
who are you? Who do you think you are to connect to Hashem? Imagine if, if uh, you see a little ant crawling on the, on the, on the floor. And the ant is talking to the other ant here. Look, look, look at this person you see. I like him very much. I want to start a relationship. I want to have a feeling. Do you feel any emo emotions? Do you feel any connection? Yes, of course. It's, uh, to have pity on any creature is, is uh, noble. But is there a, an intellectual connection? Is there a the deep emotional, that a, a two-way connection? It's impossible. Even though you and the end both are physical things. Now think about our connection to God. We will develop through our thinking, through our emotion, through our feeling, a develop a connection to God. We can only achieve, climb with the ladder of our intellect so much, not much, not, very, very far from Hashem Himself. God is beyond anything we can we can fathom. So, how do you collect? The, how do you establish a connection? This is what the Al explains that Hashem, the only way to establish a connection with God, is when God Himself initiates that connection. When he, Hashem, with his infinite abilities, is able to take his wisdom and his will, and he, con he contracts it into the commandments that he commands us, and we follow his commandments, we study his Torah, Hashem put his essence in the Torah. And when, therefore, when we use our clothings, which is the clothing of Torah and mitzvahs, and we wear them, the soul wears those clothing, those godly clothings, then it creates the connection with the essence of Hashem, with God himself. This is why it is more important than the soul that wears that, those clothing. So this is the beautiful lesson. It's also connected with Hanukkah also. That's the idea of Hanukkah. We celebrate the miracle of the oil, overcame the decrees of the Greeks. They were fighting to, uh, to oppress. They were oppressing us. They didn't want us to observe the Torah. But that statement is not really true. They didn't care Jews would do commandments, mitzvahs. Some mitzvahs make sense. They loved culture. The Torah was beautiful. In fact, the Torah was translated into Greek. And they loved it, the wisdom, the, the intellectual part of the Torah. All of this, this is beautiful. What they fought against was the fact that we insisted that the Torah is not just an intellectual experience. It is godly. It is pure. It is above logic. It's something that is totally above us. It is Hashem's will, the holiness. That's why they defiled the oil. Oil represents the God's wisdom. They didn't spill out the oil. They defiled it. They touched it. They said, it's good enough. Go light the menorah with this oil. And this is the victory of Hanukkah. So let's continue in the Alter Rebbe's, the way the Alter Rebbe explains this inside. And again, this is middle of chapter four. Now, these three garments, deriving from the Torah and its commandments, though they are called merely garments of the Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama, as we explained, this is the three levels of the soul. So those, the Torah and the mitzvahs, these, these, these holy garments, they're, they're called only garments. Nevertheless, they're much higher than the soul itself. Nevertheless, their quality, the quality of the garments, of the Torah and its commandments, is infinitely higher and greater than that of the nefesh ruach and neshama themselves. And explains why. For it is explained in the Zoya that the Torah and the Holy One, blessed be He, are entirely one. What does it mean? 
פירוש, די רייסא היא חכמה שהיא רצינה של הקדוש ברוך הוא, והקדוש ברוך הוא, בכבוד הוא בעצמו היא כל אחד. This means since the Torah is the wisdom and will of the Holy One, blessed be, it is one with his glory and essence. And this is what we explained in the chapter two. He says, Since he is the knower, he is the knowledge, and he is the known. As explained above in chapter two in the name of the Maimonides. He explained there that by God, his wisdom is not like human wisdom. In human, there is this is separate between the person, the wisdom, the subject that you study, in his intellect, different, different entities, different things. By God knows, God knows us by being us. So he's, when he has the will, his will, and it's placed in the Torah, he created the Torah, he made it in the Torah, he put the, his wisdom and his will. So it's all with, with God. It's all one with God. And therefore, when we study the Torah, we, our intellect becomes connected with God. When we do the Torah, when we speak the Torah, we become one with Hashem Himself. That is what's special about this, about these garments. Those are garments that make the person. This is a true garment that make a person, that make the soul, that elevate the soul itself. And now Dalt Rebbe poses a question, but how is it possible to grasp God? God is endless, God is infinite. Says the Alter Rebbe in the question, Although the Holy One, blessed be He, is called Ein Sof, infinite, and His greatness can never be fathomed. No thought can apprehend Him at all. And so are also his will and his wisdom. They're infinite and unfathomable. And he brings the verses that supports this idea. As it says, it is written, There is no searching of his understanding. And there's yet another verse that says, in Job, it says, It's written, when you will search to understand God, will you find? You will not find anything. Uksiv, and yet there is another verse that says, Ki loi machshavoisai machshavoisaychem. It is further written, For my thoughts are not like your thoughts, says God to man. So thus, human thoughts is incapable of grasping divine thought. How then can it be said that in understanding Torah, man grasps God's wisdom? So to this, the Alter Rebbe answers that God compressed and lowered his wisdom, clothing it in this physical, in, 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 in the physical terms and object of Teira and its commandments, so that it might be accessible to human intelligence in order that men may thereby be united with God. Okay. That's the answer. The greatness of Hashem because he is infinite. So his abilities is not limited to the infinite. He's able to bring the infinite into the finite. That's also part of the infinity of God. Says the Alter Rebbe, Concerning this, disparity between human intelligence and divine wisdom, our sages have said, where you find the greatness of the Holy One, blessed be He, there you find His humility. That is the humility of Hashem, that He lowered and He condensed and He compressed His infinite wisdom and will into physical matters of Torah and mitzvahs. 
תסדלת רבה וצמצם הקדוש ברוך הוא רצוי נבר חכמוס אבית היג מצביסתירו הוא והלכי סיים. God compressed his will and wisdom in the 613 commandments of the Tera and their laws. And also in the, in the actual letters of the Hebrew alphabet, there is also God's wisdom. And in the letter combination of scripture, and God's will and wisdom are also contained in the exposition of these verses found in the Agadot and Midrashim of our sages of blessed memory. And all of this is why. is the love that Hashem has to us in order to enable us to connect to Him. In all of this, did God compress His will and wisdom in order that every neshama or every, or even the lower soul levels, we say, the The, the lower levels are the Ruach and the Nefesh, situated as they are in the human body, will be able to grasp, to grasp them with its intellect. So when you study a, a subject in Torah, you're grasping God's intellect because God condensed his intellect into the physical intellect. And also in order to fulfill them. And also in order that it, meaning the Nefesh, Ruach, and Neshama, should fulfill them as far as, as they can, as they can be fulfilled in action, speech, and thought. And thereby clothing itself with all its ten faculties in these three garments. So all the ten faculties, every part of the intellect, every part of the emotions, will be clothed in these ten, in these uh, uh, three garments of action, speech, and thoughts of Torah and mitzvot. And that explains his Dalta, but this is, is, explains why the Torah is compared to water. The Torah, you know, the Ten Commandments begins with the word, Anochi Hashem Alekecha, I am your God. And the word Anochi, says in the Gemara, as an as a acronym of Ana Nafshi Ktavit Yehavit. I, my soul, have written and gave. Hashem says, I have given my soul through the Torah. The Torah is compared to water. Why? Because water, When you give water, let's say water flows down from the top of the mountain all the way to the bottom. The water changed, it's the same water. Unlike other types of influence, like for example, light. When you give light, the intensity of the light miles away is not the same intensity as in the source. It changes, it becomes weaker. Or other types of influence, let's say, A teacher delivers an in intellect to a student. Is the teacher giving the very essence of the intellect? Absolutely not. A teacher has much, much more depth in the in, in, in understanding the concept than the student. The student only grasps a little bit. Even though it's a smart student, one day he can become even better than the teacher. But the giving of the in, of the Intellect is not giving the very essence. But when you give water, when water comes from the mountain, it is the same water that from the top of the mountain goes down to the bottom. This is an allegory for the Torah. That the Torah is Hashem's will and Hashem's wisdom. The same will we're talking about in the Torah, about the axe, the boat that, that, that gores a cow. So here we're talking about physical objects, physical acts, physical cow. In the spiritual world, it talks about, it refers to, it alludes to more spiritual concepts. But it's the same will and the same desire, the same wisdom of Hashem that is in His, in Hashem's essence, that it was Hashem gave and lowered into our intellect. 
That's what Alter Rebbe says. Velochein nimshul atayra lemaim. Therefore, as the Torah been compared to water, ma maim yodim yemokim gavoy ramokim nachmuch. For just as water descends from a higher level to a lower level, kachatayra yodim yemkaim kavoyda. So has the Torah descended from its place of glory, meaning the lofty spiritual plane, which is its source. The original state, it is God's will and wisdom. And the Torah is one and the same with God. Whom no thought can apprehend him. At all. And that plain Torah is in, incompre- incomprehensible to man, as is God Himself. Nevertheless, that same Torah comes down level after level. From there, the Torah has journeyed in a descent in a in a descent through hidden stages, stage after stage, in the Ishtalshalos of the world. Ishtalshalos is the chain-like order of interconnected spiritual worlds. So, from one level to the other level, this we explained in chapter 2. Until it closes itself in material matters and things of this corporal world, which comprise nearly all the Torah's commandments and their laws. Most of the Torah laws are physical. We're doing mitzvahs with physical things. And thus the Torah closes itself in the material objects with with which the mitzvahs are performed, and also in the physical letters combinations written with ink in a book, the ink on the parchment. The 24 books of the Torah Nevi'im Nexuvim, the Bible, and the Torah underwent this great descent, so that every human thought be able to grasp them. And so that even speech and action, which are on a lower level, a level lower than thought, also be able to grasp them. But they should be able to grasp that even at a lower level than thought, they should be able to grasp God's will and wisdom and clothe themselves in them by performing the commandments in speech and action. So this is the end of today's year, the beautiful message that Rebbe tells us. You're grasping, you're wearing the clothing, then the shaman wears the clothing, he's wearing Hashem himself, connecting with Hashem himself. Like later on, Dal Tereb explains in, 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 in the, when, regarding when you connect to Hashem, you connect to the king, like you're hugging the king. When you hug a king, does it make a difference whether the king wears one garment in a summer day or he comes in winter and he has to wear five garments? Still, you were hugging the king. The king is in there, in the Torah. Doesn't matter how many garments he wears. The same, it's the essence of the king that you're is that you're hugging. So thank you for joining me. It's a we'll continue tomorrow and uh, have a happy Hanukkah.